Hello everyone, in this video we will discuss about basal cell carcinoma. In the previous video we discussed a skin tumor melanoma. Now going to the basal cell carcinoma. So basal cell carcinoma is carcinoma of basal cells which are derived from interfollicular epidermis or follicular uh, epithelium. So you have this is your interfollicular epidermis. In, in between the follicles you get this interfollicular epidermis and of these the basal cells the lowermost cells the basal cells these are the originating cells or otherwise even the follicular epithelium here also you get the basal cells and these are also responsible for origination of your basal cell carcinoma so the other names by which basal cell carcinoma is also known is rodent ulcer we will know why it is known as rodent ulcer also fibroepithelium of pincus it is known as it is also short form bcc is also very commonly used so this is the basal cell carcinoma in basics of basal cell carcinoma little bit is that it is a locally aggressive cutaneous tumor it's a skin tumor it does not involve any mucosal surface it involves only skin whether it is malignant or benign you uh, we say it is a locally aggressive tumor okay so it's a very slow growing tumor and it rarely metastasizes it's mostly locally aggressive only it occurs only at the sun exposed sites mostly in the lightly pigmented people mostly seen in the elderly adults because it's so slowly uh, growing it occurs at sun exposed site it is easily seen so it is recognized mostly at an early stage and is cured by local excision only now going to the etiology okay we will go to the etiology then pathogenesis and we will discuss the morphology the etiology is uh, sun exposure so uv radiation is there okay it's a very important cause then ionizing radiation other are like arsenic exposure smoking ne another very important etiology of basal cell carcinoma are certain genetic conditions okay so one is nevoid basal cell carcinoma syndrome known as also gorlin syndrome the pathogenesis which we will discuss later on is mainly based on this syndrome okay then other is xeroderma pigmentosum then is oculocutaneous albinism and is mutatory syndrome so these are the etiology now going to the pathogenesis okay pathogenesis to understand is a bit tricky but it's an easy one okay so what is the pathogenesis pathogenesis that is that most of the basal cell carcinoma they originate from the mutation in such a signaling gene that is the hedgehog signaling gene there is a mutation in hedgehog signaling gene so to understand this pathway there is a syndrome that is the gorlin syndrome okay which was etiology in etiology part also that is a nevoid basal cell carcinoma syndrome so the, what is this syndrome this is a autosomal dominant disorder in this the person has multiple basal cell carcinoma along with other tumors also mostly before the age of 20 so what happens in this is in this uh, syndrome is that there is a, a mutation in a gene okay so here we will understand the pathogenesis best okay there is a gene known as ptch okay so ptch in this syndrome what happens there are two alleles of this gene okay so one allele is lost during your germline loss of function okay by birth it is lost okay one gene is inactivated from the birth that is there is a germline loss of function mutation of that gene second gene is lost during second allele is lost during exposure to any mutagens like uv light so the if there is first uh, one loss of uh, allele okay there will be no tumor okay the second uh, allele is lost then only the tumor will express itself so how does ptch play a role okay so what happens is the ptch you have your ptch you have one more smo and then you have ssh okay so what happens is that ptch is a part of where the ssh will shh will join okay it will bind over here and when it binds ssh binds with this ptch ptch is always joined to the smo so when 
the uh, it binds what happened there is dissociation uh, dissociation of ptch and smo when it dissociate what does smo do smo starts the signal transduction okay it will start the signal transduction it will uh, send the transcription factor that is gle1 it will send and then the the normal gene expression will start and then normal development of the tissue and homeostasis repair work all will take place this is your normal cell what happens in basal cell carcinoma is that the ptch is mutated it is so mutated that it does not require binding of ssh for the uh, dissociation so the smo remains always active okay when the smo is always active it will do ligand independent signal transduction that is uh, apart from ssh also it will do the signal transduction then gle1 will be activated and then your cell uh, division will be going unregulated and this unregulated cell division will lead to basal cell carcinoma so this is the main main pathogenesis so what is ptch ptch is the protein which is a receptor for sshh that is sonic hedgehog okay this is a component of hedgehog signaling pathway which we already discussed in off state okay what happens is the ptch is in complex with another protein known as smo smo is short form for smoothened okay this is the off stage in which there is no transcription going on binding of ssh to ptch okay this will release your smo and smo will further activate the transcription factor that is gle1 and then the uh, cell growth takes place in n uh, in your syndrome what happens is there is loss of ptch function which leads to activation of smo and gle1 without any sonic hedgehog and this results in development of basal cell carcinoma just revising the thing and uh, in the diagram you understood it pretty well now going to the morphology okay morphology of uh, basal cell carcinoma depends on which uh, stage it is in okay it is a early stage or it is a later stage and some va uh, variants are also there so mostly it uh, grossly how it looks like is it appears as a pearly papule containing certain dilated blood vessels okay so here you can see this is your uh, typical picture okay it is just a small ulcer a small papule it has one thing it has slightly rolled borders okay the borders are slightly rolled okay also if it takes place on a later okay advanced stages advanced stages can also ulcerate okay and they can cause local invasion of bone or facial sinuses okay so this is known as rodent ulcer it's like the rat eats the uh, things local okay so it is therefore it's known as rodent ulcer okay it's slowly 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 eating that area okay so it's known as rodent ulcer now two patterns which can be seen is sometimes it's seen that multifocal there is the appearance of the lesion there is multifocal so, uh, that is known as multifocal superficial type and certain lesions are nodular type they grow deep okay some uh, grow in the surface and some grow deep so there are two patterns which are seen now going to the histology now histology is the tumor cells on uh, sectioning how they look like they look like a normal basal cell uh, uh, layer of the epidermis okay uh, we already understood the origin is epidermis or follicular epithelium and not from any mucosal surfaces so going to the picture how they look like is they look like here you can see this is the picture okay so uh, firstly there are cords and islands of these tumor cells and they are separated by this is your matrix okay the pinkish area is the matrix so they are separated by uh, the cords and islands of tumor cells are separated by a matrix a mucinous matrix which can contain fibroblast lymphocytes can be present inside this and how do the tumor cells individually look like you can see the tumor is very blue blue in color okay you put it in the uh, microscope you can see a very blue tumor okay so the cells individually they are very basophilic okay they are basophilic they are hyperchromatic cells and the typical two things which are present in these is there is one thing known as peripheral palisading 
and the second thing is known as retraction artifact so peripheral palisading firstly if you understand it it means that they are present at a 90 degree angle okay to their axis you can see they can present at 90 degree angle and second is the retraction artifact retraction artifact means if you have this is your stroma okay and this is a tumor cell so in between due to sectioning there is a clear area this is known as retraction artifact so firstly what is your morphology you have cords and islands of basophilic cells they have a hyperchromatic nuclei they are embedded in mucinous matrix and their surround mucinous matrix has many fibroblasts and lymphocytes important thing is the basophilic cells and the hyperchromatic nuclei second important thing is there is palisading which is present in the periphery of the tumor at the ends you will see the islands tend to arrange radially with the long axis and parallel alignment you have you have this and then you will have the tumor cells like this they are arranged in peripheral palisading pattern then important next is retraction artifact that means if this is the stroma and these are the tumor islands you will have a clear area over here okay this is known as retraction artifact and this is due to sectioning this is not actually present in the tumor this is due to the processing of the tumor retraction artifact takes place so here again this is a very good picture so you can see the retraction artifact present over here and you can see a very blue 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 tumor and at the ends if you see the tumor is arranged in the peripheral palisading pattern okay even this tumor can contain melanin also okay varied proportion some tumor will have melanin some tumor will not have melanin okay there are various variants we are not going to the details of the variants okay there are various variants which are present that is the nodular variant is there then there is adenoid variant micronodular variant infiltrative pigmentative pigmented and ulcerative okay see these are the few variants uh, microscopically the tumor has a good prognosis and is easily treated by local excision this was all about basal cell carcinoma do like share and subscribe to this channel if you like these type of videos and ask your any queries in the comment box also let me know the future topics you will like me to discuss thanks for watching this video thank you